<laughs> this story that I'm going to tell you guys today, you probably know by the title. It's the time I got in a road, raid in, road rage incident with my friend, right? Now, I don't know if you guys watched the last video, right? We had that, I showed you that little GEO tracker, right? But here's the funny thing. That's the vehicle we were in again today. Because my friend likes to drive and he wants to drive his car. Um, now, the funny thing about it is that car has a really fun time trying to hit the speed limit of 45 or more, right? Now, what's very funny about it is that thing has an overdrive mode. So basically, it gives it like higher RPMs before it shifts so it doesn't bog down as much and it gives it a little bit more horsepower. Now, it also burns a little bit more gas unless you're staying at steady speed. If you stay at steady speed, you know, you don't have to really get on the pedal a lot as much with the overdrive on the highway. So it actually is better. But apparently, if my friend has it on for too long, it literally like heats up under where it switches. I don't know why. Um, I'm not really familiar with his type of car that much. But basically, we got on the highway, right? And I don't know if you guys are familiar, right? But we got a main highway where I go, and it leads the whole way from anywhere in PA, basically. Um, it leads up to Ohio. Um, it goes to New Jersey, New York, that way. Basically, it leads you to other highways as well, like other main ones. But the funny thing is, is like, so we get an on-ramp. Um, like, the first, um, if I would go over the mountain to it, there's two ways you can get onto it, right? So, you could either go, like, the normal way, which is, like, the way you wouldn't have to worry about, like, going too fast or, like, merging on the highway. And then there's the other way, which is the highway. Now, we decided to go the highway way because it is a couple minutes faster, like, four or five minutes faster. So, we decided, you know, let's take this road. So, we decide, we get on the road, right, and my friend pushes on overdrive. He always slips it right up where we're on the on-ramp, going down, you know. And I forgot to mention... It is a little down ramp, so we are getting up a little bit of speed, you know. At this time, we probably just took a sharp left turn, and we're just getting on the on-ramp. He switches the switch. Um, we have the right-of-way. The people at our right have a yield sign, and they're coming off like the normal. Not, like, I guess it's not really a normal road, but it's like a two- or three-lane road. It's not really a highway, though. And they're coming from a bigger city. So, like, the big city, there's two two ways, or even three, I guess you could take. One's the highway, two's like the normal way that, like, with the two, three lanes without getting on the highway, basically. So, you know, we're on the on-ramp and we're going down. By the time we hit the bottom of the on-ramp, I'd say, I don't know how really long it was. It was probably a quarter mile. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's probably about a quarter mile long. We probably hit 35, right? So we're going 35 and we have our own lanes. So like, that's what's good about this, I guess, is like, you really don't have to merge if you don't want to. Or if you're just going to this one city, because like you can, if you let's say you want to go to Harrisburg, PA, you could just uh, stay on and not merge and then get off and go down and then get on the other Harrisburg highway, or you could just merge over one lane and then just follow it straight. Well, this day we were going to go look at vehicles, so we were going to go probably go to Harrisburg, right? And this is kind of what ruined the whole incident and that whole day, and like this is what changed our plans. So I was telling my friends if we hit it, there was a little, there was a big space in between this tractor trailer once it passed. Like, there's a lot of room behind us. Like, it was, like, one of those moments, like, you get on the highway, right? And all of a sudden, there's just no one. There's, like, a big gap just waiting for you, right? Well, then there's this car, and it's right beside the semi-truck. And the the way this highway is, it's three lanes. I th yeah, it's... Maybe it's four. It could be... Yeah, it's four. So, it's four lanes. <clears throat> Actually, I think it's three. So, it's three lanes, but then it's uh, ours, right? So, basically... We're going we're gonna to one. My friend's about to get over. Well, there's this car right beside the semi truck, and it's slower, so the semi truck's passing it. And then there's this big gap behind us. Well, we're still coming down the on ramp, so it's still curving. We're right about at the edge where we could, like, go over to merge over to the lane be beside us. But it's not like the yellow line yet. Like, there's still that big triangle thing, like, right after the yard, I guess you could say. The grass when you're merging on from the right side of the road. So we're getting ready to either stay in the lane or depending on, you know, what, what we're deciding to do. Because we're still kind of deciding if we want to go look at vehicles right away or if we want to grab something to eat. Because uh, it was one of those days, you know, you don't, you don't really know exactly what you want to do first. And you're not really hungry. But when you get close, you maybe you just want to grab something to eat now. So we're just about to get on the highway, the main part of the highway where, the, where our um, on-ramp connects to the highway, right? And this car has the audacity, right? We're still speeding up. We're, we're on like 40, probably 35, 40. And this car just moves over in front of us. Just slows down, right? So we couldn't really have went over to the other lane because it's still kind of blocked. You know, if we go over, we're going to either go way over the road or we could even hit the grass. You know, you don't want to do that when you're going 40 mile an hour. You could do anything's possible, right? You could pop a tire, ruin your car, do car damage, lose control, especially in a car like what we were in. 
So my friend hit the brakes, and I was like, yo, bro, just just relax. Because he, he has road... He gets really angry. He flicks everyone off, you know? like So the thing is, with his car, it's so slow, right? But if he's passing you, you know you're going really slow, and he hates that. So he, he slows down just enough so we don't hit him, right? We probably missed this car by three... Three feet at most. Like, that's just pushing it. And then this car's just still going. So I was like, yo, bro, just honk the horn at him. So he honks the horn. And I guess it's a girl driving and her boyfriend, I would say. So this girl's just driving. And I see this dude take us. He flicks us off in the mirror part so we could see because like we could see the rear view mirror. So I said, yo, honk the horn again. So I was like, yo, honk it twice. So he honks it twice. A dude rolls down his window and flicks us off. I was like, you know what? Pass these motherfuckers. So, you know, his car takes a while to spool up, so he took, he gets in the left lane, and he hits the gas. I'm talking 15 seconds later, we might slowly start catching up, and mind you, they're still going kind of slow, like, off the speed line. Like, we got a couple cars behind us by this time, and then I pull up next to him, right? And then, um, we pull up next to him, and I'm on that side, and I had my, we, now we have our windows down, because his car doesn't have air conditioning, and then... Uh, these guys had their windows down. Well, I guess it was cracked. Um, and then the guy on the, the right side of the car, he rolled his window down to flick us off. Well, so when we got up, you know, we weren't going too fast. So you could still yell out the window and they could hear it. And I was like, yo, what the fuck's your problem, dog? And, uh, you know, my friend starts yelling. So I don't know what he was yelling. You know, he just, he has road rage. So he's always yelling. You don't even want to pay attention to him. And the dude's like, you want to, you want to do this? You want to do this right now? You want to handle this problem? You know me. And in reality, I was laughing inside. My friend thought it was funny too, because he knew this dude ain't going to do nothing. So I was like, yeah, follow us. So we decide, you know what? We're going to say, screw it and just go get our food. So we pulled into this bomb cheesesteak place, right? And this car actually followed us the whole way. Well, I guess they were getting off that exit anyway, because that's why they were in the lane, but I don't know why they pulled over so quick. Um, and we got there. I was like, and so we pulled in, right? And I got out the car. My friend got out the car. And this dude, he's still in the car, right? He, he just, his, I guess his wife and him, they pulled up next to us, like three, three parking spots down from me. So we drove in, parked uh, facing the road. Right, and then my the guy pulled like three parking spots down, and they pulled in sideways. Right, they didn't even pull into the parking spot. Right, they pulled in sideways. Like I don't know if either she I don't know what she's doing and can't drive because apparently she can't drive or park. Right, so I'm already laughing in my head. This dude gets out of his car and it's kind of like it's not an SUV but it's like a, a smaller kind of I guess sedan I don't know, and he gets out and he has his hands on the top of, on the roof and he's like, Yo, what's the problem? What up? What's up with it? And I was like, no, what the fuck's your problem? And he goes, you know, and then I started explaining to him. I was like, yo, why the fuck did you do that? And he goes, oh, we thought it'd be funny to make you guys hit your brakes and slow down. I was like, yeah, bro, until we fucking rear-ended your ass and shit. And then one of us lost control or some bullshit. We got a whole bunch of damage. We have to go through insurance and all that shit. So it's just a stupid situation that you put yourself in and you put us in. And then this dude has the audacity, right? He, he thinks he's the one in charge. He thinks he's the alpha. So he starts talking his shit, right? Mind you, there are three parking spots. Well, actually four if you think about it. Because they're three away, right? And I'm not talking about these little parking spots. I'm talking about you go to like, the, you know, you go to these stores and they got like the really wide ones. Like, you know, like the ones that you could fit a damn van in with those steps on the side and shit. You could fit a whole school bus in these ones, right? So, they're three away, basically four because the car's parked in. He gets out. He's probably like on the fourth and a half, the fifth one that far away. And he's talking shit on the other side of the car. Now, his girlfriend, she's in the car, but her, her door is a little, cr it's like open, not fully, but it's like one fourth of the way open. And she's just in there like trying to agree with her boyfriend or whatever the fuck they're doing. So, I start fucking, you know, telling them what's good. You know, this is some bullshit. Don't ever do that shit again. If they do it to me again, we're going to find it. We're going to have some problems. My friend, he starts going, I don't even know what he's saying. Like I said, he has road rage, so he's just, you know. And then, you know, I tried to start being civil. You know, I was kind of telling him, I was like, yo, bro, there's reasons why you don't do this. You know, I was trying to be civil. He wasn't having it, right? So I told the dude, I was like, do you want to handle it right now? Now, mind you, I am 18 at this point, so he, he could basically do, you know, we could actually fight. You know, we might both get in trouble, but, you know, this dude was probably like 28 to 34 range. I don't even give a damn, but... This dude, he's got a wife beater on. He probably, he, it looks like he was smoking in the car and he just threw his fucking cigarettes all over the goddamn blacktop and shit when we pulled in. Well, I couldn't, I shouldn't say he did, but his, his 
wife did. She just threw the fucking cigarette right in the the blacktop. And it was kind of uh, weird because I hate whenever people throw cigarettes in the grass, especially when they're still lit. Because on a hot day when it's dry, that shit could catch on, right? And where we pulled in at, there was no concrete thing uh, separating the grass, the dirt, and the blacktop. So, <clears throat> you know, she threw it a little bit farther. It was probably like a foot away from the grass. Um, and it was a very hot, dry day. It hasn't rained for like a couple of days, maybe three days at this point. So, you know, that kind of pissed me off. Um, cause like, that's just a, doing stupid stuff that you shouldn't be doing. I mean, at your house, maybe you wouldn't do that or maybe you would, I don't know, but that's just, that pisses me off. But then again, this is coming from a non smoker, you know, so, uh, I guess to each their own, I can't really tell you how to smoke your own cigarette and what to do with it. You know, I can kind of, you know, let you know that it's not right, but I mean, I can't really make you, especially when you're by, if you're by yourself, how am I going to do that? But that's besides the point. Let's get back to the story, you know? So the dude, <clears throat> he's talking all hard and I was like, you know, bro, you're still behind the car. What are you going to do about it? You know, I was like, bro, you talking that big game for a little bit of bullshit that I sense across the car. So he's just over there still talking. Then he, then he's finally, he stands up straight and then he walks around the back of the car, right? So he's sitting around the corner now by the trunk. And by this time, I'm already out. And I'm just standing there with the door shut in my friend's car. My friend's out. He's around the back bumper. We're still sitting there talking, you know. Uh, my hands are in my pockets. Well, the half hand pocket where your thumb's in there and then your hand's not. Basically like that. And my friend, I don't know, he's just over there pissed with his arms crossed and shit. And um, so, you know, I, I was like I said, I was trying to be civil, right? And then this dude just, would, he was just screaming. And then, um, you know, I told him, I was like, bro, I can do this right now. And he goes, no, nah, you guys ain't worth my time. And then he gets in his car and he's like, let's get out of here. And then, this girl, right, <laughs> she must have pulled in there, and they must have got ready to want to dip real quick, because this bitch, right, there's two, there's like trees, right, so there's trees every like, I don't know, 15, 15 foot, she goes, where they were parked sideways, they could go out, because the road, the main road's there, or they could go out and go around, you know, maybe another 40 feet around the back of the building and pull out right there, but, um, yeah, her dumbass drives through the grass onto the road, almost hits the tree on the left side of the car, like took the mirror almost clean off. And when she went in the traffic, there was a red light. Well, she pulls through that, almost hits the car coming behind her, and they lay on the horn, and then she runs the the red light. Like, huh? Luckily, no one was there because, like, I guess the way it is is there's the main roads and then there's, like, the back road. But really, no one ever is on the back road too much because it goes to, like, a, I guess, housing area and, like, a lot of people don't drive on it. But still, like, could you imagine if she hit someone? Now, you're probably going to do a lot of damage at that range, but that's still, it's just, like, reckless driving. If you can't drive, don't. Speaking of that, but the guy, yeah, so the guy got all scared. I, I didn't want to add all the details, all the stuff he said because he, 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 he looked scared. Um... And my friend wasn't even really doing the talk. He was just kind of bitching about how the traffic still. And I'm talking about, you know, like, this dude, he needs to learn some respect. You know, put some respect on my name, you know? Especially when I'm the one trying to help you, you know? And I really don't like disrespect. You know, you like, I'll let it slide, but, like, that didn't happen, especially when you're the one in the wrong, you know? You just did three different things right there. And, then that, and that was all within, like, a 10-minute it was probably seven, okay? Because, like, uh, the highway, when we got on, by the top, that took about a whole three minutes, the first part of the story. And then when they followed us, that was about four minutes, five minutes or so. But a lot of it was, like, highway, and then we get off the on-ramp, and it was mostly just following cars and red lights. So I'd say it was about a whole seven to ten minute fiasco, the whole thing combined. We only really, he only really talked outside for, like, 30 seconds. But, like, and then this lady comes out, right? Because I, I guess, um... The place we were going, the food place, has their door cracked. Well, the manager of the place and then a worker came out and they were wondering what was going on. And I told, I explained them the story and then they, they, uh, they were, they looked at the tire because like you could, because like the grass was still up so you could see they drove through it and then there was another car out there honking the horn and they heard the honk. So I guess they were like looking out the door when they saw it or the one, I should say the one customer was because then the customer came out too and they had their food and, um, well, they, they explained it. They were like, yeah, I saw them drive through the grass. They're telling the truth and shit. And then, like, they, they almost hit the car. And by this time, since it was a red light, um, uh, the car that almost 
hit them because they pulled out was that the red light stopped and that red light was only like that road was like maybe 40 feet away right so their windows were down I was like and then uh, (laughs) my friend he yelled and he goes yeah that was a close call for you guys huh and the the car and the one dude he uh, I guess he was driving and then his girlfriend was in the passenger and she and um, she said something we couldn't really hear and then he he yelled he's like yeah that shit was scary and then I was like yeah that's what happened to us too basically and then they drove off. Um, I just we went in and got our food. I talked to the manager of the place a little bit more, you know, kind of just what, we, what I normally do. And then I explained the whole situation to him. Like I said, um, my friend he was still angry about it. Like he wasn't still talking about it, but like you could just tell he was pissed. And I I kind of like see my thing is like I'm not gonna keep being mad about something when I know I'm probably never gonna see someone again because it's just a waste of time for me personally like I'm not gonna sit on that I'm not gonna hold a grudge I'm one of those people all forgiven stuff like that really easily not I guess I shouldn't say really easy depending on what it is right I don't like to make big deals out of things but yeah then we just ended up our day we got the food and we went looked at some vehicles we looked at one and then we decided just to go home so well we looked at two but the one we didn't really we went to look at we didn't really like so we only looked at really one took one for a test drive but yeah I guess the moral of the story is you know if something like that happens you know, maybe just don't even worry about it or like, just like I said, you know, honk your horn and just go on without your day. You know, most of these times, like you're just wasting time, you're wasting that anger and you're doing a whole bunch of stuff for really nothing. And then like, what if like, let's say they had a weapon on them, right? Like what if it was a whole squad of like five dudes, right? And they just had weapons on them or, you know, just even like, what if we actually got down the fighting, right? And like, let's say we get charged or we get in trouble, you know what I mean? It's just, you just gotta, um... You just gotta let it slide, you know? And yeah, they're, they're, you know, they shouldn't be able to be driving and stuff like that. Um, but the whole situation, you know, you could just kind of avoid it. Um, now, like, if you would have hit them and let's say they would have kept running or that'd be different. But even then, try not to, like, you know, be too mad with it. Because either way, you know, you gotta look at it in, fi- in five, ten years down the road, 20. Is this really gonna affect your life? You know? Is it going to affect your life more if you actually act upon it? Basically is how I look at it. But yeah, this has been the road rage incident that happened to me three and a half to four months ago with my one friend. This is the end of the video. It's been your boy Slays, and I'm out. Peace.